Sam Carcini, of course, covers the Flyers for the Inquirer. He joins us now on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline as the Flyers will be a part of the round robin starting on August the 2nd. You can hear that game right here on 97.3 ESPN. Sam, how you been, pal? Good, good. How you guys doing? All right, man. And I know that uh, I think I saw you uh, put some pictures touring the uh, Jersey Shore here in the summer. So uh, it's been uh, you know interesting that uh, you're going to be getting ready to bounce back into some hockey here. Now, are you going to be in the Toronto hub? Is uh, are you making that trip? Yeah, we're still not sure. To be honest with you, there there's a lot uh, a lot more uh, that has to be decided as far as. Uh, uh, you know, who's allowed to go. Right. And if you can only go for one series, can you go for four series, can you go for just two series? So uh, what kind of access are you going to have? So we're trying to figure that out right now because uh, the NHL hasn't really uh, made it clear as, as to uh, what kind of access you're going to have. So we're still waiting for that, still trying to iron things out. But we'll be, we'll be covering it uh, in, in any event in some manner, whether it's, whether we're like the broadcasters are going to broadcast from back here, um, you know, or we may just, you know, cover it from here, from Philadelphia and, and uh, you know, do Zoom interviews with the players and, and conference calls on the phone with the players. So either way, we'll, we'll get it done somehow, but it's, it's going to be uh, an interesting run, no question about it. All right, Sam, uh, would you say that Nolan Patrick not uh, being on the camp roster was really the biggest news of the roster? Yeah, I think it was because uh, I thought they might reward him and, and just to have him, you know, feel a part of the team. He has been kind of isolated uh, basically for the whole season. I mean, he's been with the team a little bit. And he's made a couple road trips and he's skated with the team in morning skates and he's been in a few practices with them. So I thought they might uh, throw him a bone, if you will, and just let him feel part of things. So, but they just decided, uh, you know, in cooperation with their medical staff, that it was best to leave him uh, home. He's in uh, Winnipeg right now in Manitoba, and he has been working out. And and according to Chuck Fletcher, the Flyers general manager, uh, he said today that uh, that uh, Patrick feels uh, better now than he has at any point in the last 12 months. So that's that's the positive. The negative is that uh, you know that that he's not going to be with him. He's not going to be working out with them, and uh, yeah, I, I I think it was uh, it was a bit of a surprise. I, I thought uh, I didn't expect him to play. Let's put it that way. But I thought he would travel with them, work out with them, and I thought it would have been good for him. But uh, uh, the medical people at this time say it's best to shut him down and just to have him concentrate on twenty 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 one, and uh, they expect a, a full recovery at that time. The other surprise, I think, was that uh, Igor Zamola, Zamola, who's a 20-year-old defenseman, that he's on the roster. And uh, not that he's not talented. Uh, at the inquiry, we have him ranked as number third prospect uh, with the Flyers. And uh, But the fact that he had back surgery probably late January, early February. Uh, so that really surprised me that you know he was one of the guys. And Fletcher did not rule out even playing him. And I think that would be... A shocker if he did play but uh you know i think he's here just to get some experience and some work and uh, they really think highly of this kid and it's one of the reasons i think you're going to see uh them try to move shane goss in the offseason well maybe he plays during the round robin play because it does seem like elaine Vigneault is not putting as much stock as maybe we would have thought into that round robin play compared to the actual first playoff series yeah, I still would be surprised. Uh, you know, if he wasn't coming up the back surgery, I, I would, you know, I would say that's a possibility. But I would really be surprised if he played in that. But uh, uh, Fletcher did not rule it out. I will say that. And uh, but you're right. That was that was another surprising thing today. A little bit that that uh, Vigneault kind of downplayed uh, the series, the round robin with the course Boston and Tampa Bay and Washington. So. Uh, you know, he said they're important. You want to get the highest seating you can. But more importantly, we want to be ready for August 11th. So that's what they're focused on. August 11th is the start of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Um, you know, if, if all things being equal, you'd, you'd like to at least move up one seed. You know, right now they're the fourth seed, 
And if Pittsburgh beats Montreal, as expected, even though Pittsburgh uh, had several players, I think it might have been nine today, missed practice uh, because someone uh, connected to the team uh, has coronavirus. So they're out uh, just as a precaution. But my point is you really, if you can avoid it, you don't want to play the Penguins right away. Uh, and if the Flyers finish fourth and Pittsburgh beat Montreal, uh, they would play each other in the first round. Yes, yeah, Sam, I was going to ask you about the follow-up there, which is, you know, how important are these games to the Flyers in terms of, are we going to see Carter Hart play all three since he really hasn't played, you know, for a couple of months here? Do they not want to risk playing him? Um, are they gonna have the, are they not going to feel like a preseason game? I mean, how do you think they're going to approach these three games? Yeah, they will have the one preseason game, and I would think in that game you're going to split the duties because you, you want to give Elliott – you don't want Elliott to be totally rusty. So I would think they'd split that. They're only going to have one exhibition game. They talked about maybe having two. Uh, the NHL did, but uh, they went back to just one. So to my way of thinking, you play Carter Hart until you lose, and if you lose – then you go to Elliott. But if you have a chance to finish real high and with a high seeding, um, I go with Hart. But the way Vigno has has played both of them, I would not be surprised if he starts with Hart and then goes to Elliott right away. Um, if you're asking me to play coach, I, I go with with Carter Hart until he loses. Then if he loses and you, uh, with one loss, you're probably not going to get the top seed. Then I go to Elliott just to give him some work. But uh, he's got an interesting decision, and, and uh, you know it'll it'll play out during uh, during camp. I should say that uh, Carter Hart looked extremely sharp today. That was a real good sign. That uh, he was in the first session. They had two sessions today, and Carter Hart looked extremely sharp. So I think uh, you know he's uh, he's going to pick up where he left off, and he was uh, he was sizzling in his last uh, three four weeks. It looks like Morgan Frost made the list, and he's someone who's very intriguing and exciting to watch. Hopefully he could take that next jump. Do you sense that he might get some playing time throughout all this? He might. He's the kind of guy that might get some time in, in, the, in, the, in the first series, the round robin. Uh, I would think he would certainly get some time in, in the exhibition game. He's an interesting player, as is Joel Faraby right now. And, and I asked Dalian Vigna this today. You know what are his his prospects of playing, and he said that's a good question. You know he still has to figure that out. James Van Riemsdyk, of course, is coming back from a, a broken finger, so that could bump Farabee out of the lineup. Farabee played well though during he was in about half the games during the nine game winning streak, and uh, but I would think that uh, he'll come out if I had to guess. Uh, he was the second line left wing for four or five of those games during the winning streak. But I would think Scott Lawton may move up to the second uh, line left wing. That's where he played. Uh, he played a lot there during the streak as well. And JVR, I think, will be on the third line. And uh, so we'll see how it plays out. Uh, um, but they have some interesting decisions. I think the toughest decision that Vigneault is going to have is Joel Farabee. Does he play? Does he does he maybe move Lawton to a fourth line center uh, and take Nate Thompson out of the lineup? That, that it gets tricky there. But my guess is that Farabee won't play in Game One. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he if he, if he does get some action uh, during that the three game uh, round robin. Now, Sam, obviously you saw this team all season long, and they were probably at their best right when this thing kind of hit the pause button. So what Flyers team should fans anticipate? Are they this uh, top four team in the East that has a shot to make a deep run, or was that? Uh, were you surprised at what you were seeing? Yeah, I, I don't think it was a mirage. I think they really came together and, and – uh, you know, they, they've been really consistent. If you look at it, the first month of the year, they were uh, uh, trying to find themselves and it took them about a month, maybe six weeks before they actually were over 500. I'm counting overtime uh, losses as a loss, but they still got points. But after that, from like, you know, uh, early November or mid November on, they were uh, as consistent as almost any team in the league. And a lot of that has to do with them blending together, learning Vigneault's system, and got to give Elaine Vigneault a lot of the credit. To me, he's a strong coach of the year candidate. 
I really think they have a good mix of, of uh, veterans, young players on the rise, guys like Konechny, you know, really came through in Myers and Sanheim, and even a guy, a fourth liner like Aubrey Cabell came in and, and solidified that fourth line. So, you know, you put that together. Provrove is another young guy who, who had an outstanding season. And you put that together with the veterans, the Couturiers and the Hazes and the Voraceks, Giroux, and, and on and on. And it's a real good mix. So I, I think they're in a good position to uh, at least win their first playoff series since 2012. It's, it's been a long time. And, and then from there, it, it's all about matchups and, and who you're going to face. How much of Ivan Provorov's bounce back season can you credit to Matt Niskanen? And I was actually asked a tough question. Who was the better addition this offseason? Was it Matt Niskanen or Kevin Hayes? And you would think people lean towards Kevin Hayes because of the personality and more of the point production from an offensive standpoint. But Matt Niskanen, I remember when the trade happened with Gudis. I didn't really understand why we picked up an older defenseman and still took on some of Gudis's money. But I was so wrong with that. Matt Niskanen has been absolutely outstanding. Yeah, that's a good question. I, I think Hayes and this have been have both been as valuable. One on defense, they're totally different players. Of course, Niskanen is a stay-at-home guy, great leader, great guy in the locker room. And as you mentioned, he's a he's a big reason that Provorov steadied his game and looked like the Provorov that we've seen in the past. And uh, you know, Hayes has been a, a revelation as well. Just a uh, an underrated player. You don't really appreciate a player to see him day in and day out. And thing I liked about him is he's a 200 foot player. As, as they say, he's, he comes back, plays defense and was real good on the penalty kill. And he, he led the league or was tied for the league lead in shorthanded goals. And, and, uh, you know, just gave the team a personality, which they, they lack. And, uh, but Niskanen, you know, they call him steady Eddie and, and, uh, and there's a reason for that. He, he is just unflappable out there. And, and uh, he anchored the defense. And, and Justin Braun, another addition, who started out very poorly uh, over the last four months, he was, you know, he was terrific too. So, you know, give uh, Chuck Fletcher a lot of credit because uh, those three guys, and even Tyler Pitlick to a certain extent, uh, a newcomer, uh, really, really did a good job. Uh, Sam, we'll leave it with this. I mean, uh, I know Shane Gossespierre is working his way back from the knee injury. He hopes to be ready for the playoffs. Um, any guy's role that will change because of the time off? I mean, that wasn't maybe a part of, uh, didn't have a big role because of injury or anything, and now when they come back, do you see something change, or does Elaine say, you know what, we were rolling, we're going to stick with what we were doing beforehand? Yeah, I think, as I mentioned before, I think Farabee is the guy whose role will change. He was, you know, he was the regular left winger on the second line for a lot of their winning streak, but you know, you have to make some tough decisions and, you know, Van Riemsdyk is, is going to be in there. Um, but again, I think Farabee will find himself in the lineup at times and he's the kind of guy that can make the most of it and stay in the lineup. But, uh, to start with, I think he is probably going to be the odd man out that they have a month to figure this out, but I, I would think he'd be the odd man out and that that's probably the biggest change. Uh, you know, Phil Myers was out the last game when uh, March 10th, and uh, he's healthy now, so he'll be back on the second pairing with Travis Sanheim, I would assume. Uh, but other than that, you know, I, I, you know, I don't see any major changes. Uh, there's obviously the, the chance, you, God forbid, that somebody comes down with the COVID and and misses some time. Uh, but that's that's why the NHL is allowing 30 players plus unlimited goalies right now in camp because if somebody is ill or injured, they'll have some backups. Flyers have some pretty good depth right now, and, and that's going to help them. Uh, Gossesbury, you mentioned him. He was out with a, a knee injury. Uh, he had arthroscopic surgery to his left knee in January and had just come back when the season was paused, uh, played uh, the last game because of the injury to Myers, and today he revealed – that seven weeks ago he had surgery on his other knee. So that kind of like uh, really tells you that uh, Robert Haig will be in the lineup. There's no question. I mean, uh, they don't even know if, if Ghost will be ready to play when the season restarts. So, you know, Robert Haig will be uh, on the third pairing, and he's, he's had a, an underrated year as well and leads the team in uh, hits and blocks a lot of shots and uh, – 
to me, he's kind of the un- unsung guy on defense. So I, I think you're going to see him play a steady and regular role on defense as well. All right, Flyers beat writer Sam Carcitti from the Inquirer. Our guest here is the Flyers uh, just a couple of weeks away from starting things up. Phase three began today, and uh, check that out uh, from Sam Broadstreet Bull on Twitter. Sam, appreciate it, man. Thanks for the time, guys. Always uh, good to hear you, Sam. And, of course, he, like all guests, appeared via the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. You know what I loved? Just hearing a hockey guy talk about a 200-foot game. That just gets me going. He's got a good 200-foot game. Was he right? Of course he was right. I love that. That's why I was smiling over here.